Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider Man the Animated Series Jack O' Lantern, another gliding, bomb throwing villain in the Spider Man universe. Now, I really like this Jack O' Lantern figure because he looks cool, he looks scary, he looks kind of Halloween themed. I like to use this guy for a scarecrow thug or henchman. I ordered this guy from Amazon and he arrived today, so let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see, it's on the retro large card back. Marvel Comics, Ages 4 Plus, Spider Man. Jack O' Lantern. Here he is in the package. It looks like we have a couple Jack O' Lantern bombs, his glider, alternate hands on the back. Here he is on the glider. Your instructions how to switch the parts. And there is his barcode in case that helps anybody. So, no further ado. Let's open him up. And I did end up getting three of these guys. I mentioned earlier I like to use them as Scarecrow Henchmen. I've gotten three of every Jack Land figure they've made so far on 6 inch scale. So I look forward to adding these guys to the mix. Alright, now that this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He comes with his hoverboard, two alternate hands, totally four interchangeable hands, and then one removable pumpkin bomb that will attach to his belt. Before I load all that, let's talk about and check out the figure. So Jack O' Lantern is a mercenary. He's one of many Spider-Man rogues that uses sort of a hoverboard or glider type thing. We have the Green Goblin, we have the Hop Goblin, we have the Jack O' Lantern, hell there's a guy named Demo Goblin. Still, it's kind of a unique character for him, and he has this Jack O' Lantern flamey head look. Reminds me of Halloween, that's for sure. This figure has been released by Toy Biz, by Hasbro before. I like to use this guy as a scare crunch wing because I just think it's fitting. He looks quote unquote scary, very Halloween esque, and something that would fit into sort of a horror scarecrow display. That is why I got three of these guys, and we'll take a look at that in a little bit. In the meantime, let's take a look at this figure. Starting with his head here, it's a jack o' lantern. What more can I say? It's a pumpkin, his eyes cut out, he's got a little sort of stick at the top, little stump. Semi-transparent plastic for the flames on his hair. Curious what that's going to look like under black light. Go further down. His armor is textured, it's scaled, and it's even kind of shiny. He's got green gloves, double-jointed elbows, double-jointed knees. You can see the one pumpkin bomb removed from his belt. These do not come off, but one of them does. Overall, I think he looks absolutely fantastic. Now let's take a look at his face and head sculpt. The texture on the pumpkin's good. The sculpt is good, the paint's good, it's all there. And here are all three of these jack o' lantern figures with their accessories laid out. Army building. That's my specialty. And here's the figure, broken down as far as he can go with all of his removable parts detached. Now check out his accessories. Let's start with his hands. He has a total of four of them, two left hands and two right hands. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. And here's his other pair of hands. His right hand is a large gripping hand, and his left hand is an open hand. Now let's look at his pumpkin bomb. It's nothing more than an orange little circle. It's got a little hole there for the peg on his belt so you can touch it. Absolutely no other detail. Looks more like an orange and a pumpkin bomb. And because I got three of these figures, I have three of these pumpkin bombs. So I can even have one attached to his belt, all six there, and he can still be holding two more. Here's the jack-o'-lantern holding and getting ready to throw his pumpkin bomb. And here he is, holstering that bomb, all six on his belt. Now we have his glider, which comes in two separate pieces. It's pretty small and basic, which is probably a good thing. That way they don't have to make him an overpriced deluxe figure. So we have this sort of circle here. You can see the two pegs for the peggles on his feet. And then the bottom, it's sort of... I don't know, simulates like a fan or a thruster of some sort. Now it has this hole here, and it gives two options. Number one, if the hole is like this, it's flat, and it'll sort of stand upright. Now, you can attach this piece too to cover up that hole as if it's his glider. You put him up there, have him with a flight stand, you can see the bottom of it like this. It looks better this way, but functionality not quite as good. So you have two different options there, depending on how you display this guy. Here's a jack o' lantern on the hoverboard. Got the pegs and the holes on his feet. Looks pretty good. It doesn't look as good when you have them under there, 
but if you're gonna see it from below, just pop that little thing in, and bam, here he is, flying around New York City, chasing Spider-Man in the air. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now for his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing at about six and a half inches tall, which can translate to 16 and a half centimeters. And if you go to the top of the fire on his head, about 7.25 inches tall, and for his articulation. Starting with his head, of course, you can rotate side to side. You can look up and down a little bit. Can't really tilt his head from side to side much. Shoulders on a ball joint goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He does have a butterfly joint, go forward and back. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows, they go in about that far. His wrists rotate and it's hinged. He's got an ab crunch, forward and back. Waist swivel below that. Legs completely of splits, or at least pretty close. Ball joints, they go forward all the way. Back, not much. He's got a thigh cut below that. Double jointed knees. Boot cut. Then his ankle, forward and back. Tilt rock, the rotations in the boot cut. Here's a look at those three jack-o'-lanterns acting as Scarecrow henchmen. They're following Scarecrow through the graveyard. Then, with even more Marvel Legends jack-o'-lantern figures as Scarecrow henchmen. And now, to add even more Marvel Legends jack-o'-lantern figures to the Scarecrow gang. And in case that wasn't enough, here's a couple more. Now let's check them out next to some other action figures, starting off with some other Scarecrow henchmen. As you guys have already seen in this video, I got three of these jack o lantern figures with the intent to use them as Scarecrow henchmen in my DC action figure collection. And I also got three of the previous Marvel Legends jack o lantern figures. These ones have a little bit more realistic look to them, but they're a lot thinner and harder to stand. And way back when Toy Biz was doing Marvel Legends, I got three of their jack o lantern figures. They used to have a light-up feature, but the batteries are all dead on these guys. And before Marvel Legends, Toy Biz was making smaller Spider-Man animated figures. I got a couple of those jack o lantern figures back when there were no other options. These were my original Scarecrow henchmen. You can see the evolution of jack o lantern figures. Two from Toy Biz, two from Hasbro. I'd say the newest one is my favorite of the four. Here he is, next to a couple of Arkham Knight style Scarecrow henchmen. These are a couple of Plan B Toys military figures with Scarecrow masks from the DC Direct Arkham Knight Scarecrow. And here he is, next to four different McFarlane Fortnite Skull Troopers. These are the original versions, 7 inch scale. I got four of these guys for Scarecrow Henchmen as well. I have a lot of different options for my Scarecrow gang. Then, next to the Walgreens exclusive Green Glow Skull Trooper. Later, Jazzwares took over the Fortnite license. They were making 6 inch scale figures, and they made their version of the Skull Trooper. Of course, I had to get four of those as well. Now it's like these 6 inch Jazzwares are a little bit too small next to Jack-O-Lantern, and these 7 inch McFarlane are a little bit too large next to him. He can sort of be fudged into either a 6 or 7 inch collection, and I appreciate that. Jazzwares also made the Purple Glow version of the Skull Trooper. That's actually the version they let off with. And finally, here he is, next to the Jazzwares Inverted Skull Trooper. Here's a look at all my different Scarecrow figures. I have a ton of henchmen for a ton of Scarecrow figures. Just pick which one you want to lead them. Here's jack o lantern next to Tombstone, the only other figure in this wave that I got. And here's my entire collection of Hasbro, Marvel Legends, Spider-Man, both animated and retro crowd figures. They are all fantastic, very solid releases. And here he is, next to the Patch and Joe Fix-It 2-pack, most recent Marvel Legends set that I've gotten. Now let's check him out, next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise. In case you don't know which ones you can mix him with, since he's a Hasbro Marvel Legends, they're typically the 6-inch scale. I'm going to start my comparisons with some of the smaller action figure lines I collect and work my larger. But first, let's check him out with some of his Hasbro brothers. Here he is, next to some G.I. Joe classified figures, some Hasbro Fortnite figure, and a Hasbro Power Rangers figure. And now, with some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures and some SH Figure Arts action figures. Here he is, next to a Kit Kat bar. And here he is, next to some Mafex and Mattel DC figures. Then, with both some Jazzwares and Mattel wrestling figures. Now, with some Mezco and NECA figures. Next, with some DC Direct and McFarlane toys. And finally, with some DST, Diamond Select toys, and some Jack specific wrestling figures. So overall, this Jack-O-Lantern figure is absolutely fantastic. 
He looks great. He is the best of all four different versions that I have. In addition to that, I'm going to be able to use him in my Batman action figure collection as a Scarecrow henchman. He is perfect for two uses. His accessories, they're good. I'm a little bit underwhelmed by his glider, but it looks the way it's supposed to look. He has alternate hands. I wish all six of his pumpkin bombs could remove from his belt, but at the same time, then you might have issues with them falling off. The sculpt and paint shop are absolutely excellent. The pumpkin, the fire, the texturing, the scaled armor, it all looks great. His articulation is everything you'd expect from a modern Hasbro Marvel Legends figure. If I were to rate this guy, I'm very impressed. I think I'm going to give him an 8.5. I really, really like this figure. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.